the news that we all got this morning left us parents with a lot to process. It's really hard to imagine how kids and teens are taking it all in. That's right, especially in this age of social media. So we brought in our friend Dr. Wendy Sue Swanson, Seattle Mama Doc, to talk about how we discuss with our kids. And it seems like we're having to do this more and more frequently, Wendy, when it comes to discussing. Let's just start. Um, how do we approach this issue with our kids? Because, you know, when they get up and they're in middle school, they know all this stuff because they've checked their phones. Yeah. So what do we do? Yeah, well, it's funny. I was on Twitter at like 1 in the morning and saw some things, went to bed, and then there are the radio streams at 6, right? And you hear it. So to the point in some ways, you know, the beginning of a good communication plan is communicating and talking right from the top to acknowledge that today is not a typical day and this is becoming a part of American culture right now. But that being said, kids need to understand t things in kind of those pint-sized terms that are appropriate to them. So middle schoolers, et cetera. But let's talk about school-age kids. So my kids, 8 and 10 years of age, woke up this morning and I mentioned this was happening to them because I felt I would rather them hear it first from me mm -hmm. than hearing it on the playground. Yeah. Kids will hear a lot of different information and tease it out and understand it in different ways. And we have some graphics to go over this by age. But young kids, those kids who are ultimately in those school age, until about the age of seven or eight, they have a hard time really distinguishing between reality and fantasy. Keep your information simple and brief. I said today, you might hear about a shooting. A bad man took a gun and hurt more people in America in one shooting than has ever happened before. And it was in a place where people were having a good time. This is is not typical and normal. Do you have any questions, right? So I didn't go into the gore and detail. I didn't go into specific numbers. I didn't talk about things, but I did say, I'm gonna spend my day thinking about how to keep kids healthy. And we do certain things in our homes. So chase information, right? With ways that you as a family keep your own children safe. If you have firearms in your home, remind your kids that if there are firearms there, they are stored separate from ammunition and they are locked up so that no one, no bad people can get them. Mm -hmm. As kids age, you can go into more more detail and of course to your point middle schoolers will wake up and have questions ultimately that are more probing it's it, the best thing you could do is tell the truth and answer questions and admit when you don't know all the answers they can distinguish in middle school the difference between reality and fantasy they'll ask more questions about safety be honest you can be vulnerable right but having a sense of control that this isn't going to happen every day um, and that we do things in our lives and then as kids get older and older and sophisticated again it's kind of thinking really carefully about what can we avoid that puts us at risk? We know violent media, violent video games changes the experience of firearms, and we know the number one thing we can do in our communities protect protect people from unintentional harm from firearms is to make sure that they are locked up and safe and that they are away from children and out of reach. And, and, and lastly, with mental health, you know, I think we always get into these gun control conversations on these days and we need to keep them up and we need mental health services in people. And if you've got concerns about a family member, about someone who doesn't seem safe in your home, not having a firearm in that home or access is really important. In King County, data suggests if you have someone who's unstable from a mental health standpoint in your home, the rate of a successful ending their life by suicide goes up ninefold if there's a firearm in the home. So we can change the environment. We can build trust with our families and kids and answer questions and turn off the TV, even though I'm on TV, turn off the TV at times too and make sure you're helping translate with kids what's going on. Right. Seems like an ongoing conversation to make them feel safe. And yeah. ongoing steps you can and take. And ongoing modeling, right? Good things that you're doing in your community with people that you love and in your own home environment, asking about firearms before play dates, making sure that family members understand that you want your family in safe environments and ways to decrease that risk. Okay. Dr. Wendy Sue Swanson, thank you so much. Thank you. Good information there.